All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Pilipovich Show are my good buddies, Drift Glass and Blue Gal. They are, of course, bloggers for Crooks and Liars, as well as their own great respective blogs. And they are all also the co-hosts of the podcasts, The Professional Left, which you can find at professionalleft.blogspot.com. Drift Glass, Blue Gal, thank you so much for being on the show again. We're glad our, to be here, Matt. Our pleasure, Matt. We love you, Matt. Oh, I love you guys too. So, but before we get going and into the into the the thick of things here, um, I just want to take a second uh, on the air to thank you both uh, for one contributing to the show's robbery fund, and also for <laughs> for talking about it on your show, for tweeting about it, and spreading the word. Um, you know, I got actually I got a, a more than one donation. One of your listeners in 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 the UK uh, donated to me because of you guys. So, really, thank you so much. I really really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Our pleasure, man. Our pleasure. All right, so niceties aside, what you actually said on, on the show is uh, something that I really agree with. Like, what, I love having you guys on because what we actually have is very much a type of debate that you would have uh, around the dinner table with like your family and stuff. Because we're we're all we're all progressive here, mm-hmm. but we still disagree on certain things. And I think we're going to have something that we're going to disagree uh, on here. Cool. And that is the big topic I want to talk about here is is the NSA. And uh, let me just start out here, and then I'm going to give you plenty of time to kind of respond to this and I'm taking this and I'll say I'm taking this mostly from Drift Glass's uh, blog posts in the last month or so. And, so and just, just, and I just want to say that this is not Blue Gal's writing. This is not her. These aren't her opinions. These this are is mine. this is this is your. This is I'm right. saying this to Drift Glass, and we'll let Blue Gal obviously chime in on this too. Um, mm-hmm. But so okay, tell me if I'm wrong here, Drift Glass. From you, uh, this is this is the impression I get from your writing from the last month that. Yeah. From the impression, I feel that you feel that that Glenn Greenwald and Edward Snowden, their personalities are actually far more important than the actual NSA revelations. That is the, the, the gist that I get from your writing, and that's going back like a month looking over what you've written since these revelations happened. Um, we can get into more specifics, but that's kind of the broad question that I want to I wanna start out with. It, 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 am I correct am I, or am I, am I wrong here? Oh, Matt, you're, of course you're wrong. You're completely okay. wrong. I, no. <laughs> Checkmate. No. I, I was, actually, I was trying to make... I got a very good email. A very, um, I get lo- long, thoughtful emails from listeners and from uh, readers who ask me just those kind of questions, and I, I try to answer in kind. And it was a really thoughtful email. And my response to this person, my response to you, I suppose, is, um, my impression, my biased opinion about what I'm writing about, is more. If I had to sum it up, it's Glenn, uh, Edward Snowden is is not at issue here. I think his leaks are, are every time I post, I try to, I remind people, this is a large and consequential story. This is an important story. This is a crucial story. This is a story that requires a lot of debate and discussion and dissection. What Glenn needs is an editor because in my biased opinion, he keeps intruding his, uh, litigators mind, his advocacy mind, into the story. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think Matt Taibbi was right. Every journalist is an advocate. Every journalist has a point of view. Right. But if you aggressively intrude your point of view into your article, then I think it's fair game to say, well, okay, how much of this are the facts of the case and how much of this is your advocacy point of view? I also think Twitter has ruined, (laughs) ruined journalism or it's made it better. I don't know which. Because actually, I think a, bl- a bit of both. Actually, I think in some <laughs> ways it's definitely made it better, but in other ways that's obviously made it like the the discourse is obviously much more uh, terse. I guess I would say it is, and it's 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 much more harsh. And I think um, I, I I was involved. I will say on, on a personal level um, in a, a long term relationship, and I'll go that far with a with an advocate attorney who was a very nice woman, very smart, very capable for whom I have a lot of respect, but you never, ever want to have those guns turned on you because suddenly (laughs) there's only two points of view uh, tolerated in any debate. Either I am a hundred percent right or you're a monster. And there simply is no, there's not going to be any other point of view tolerated in this discussion. And that's my problem. It's, I think we need to have a really open, rich, vibrant discussion of, the limits of surveillance and what happens when you have 
advanced technology infused into warfare? And are we even at war? And what is a terrorist? And how do we define that? And what does citizenship mean? And how do we define that? I think that the reporting, the facts under the story are really important. I think that, however, the same reporter is trying to circumscribe the debate into only two camps. Either you agree with me 100% or you're a cultist and a monster. And I think that's illegitimate. I think that's a bad way to conduct a debate. Now, I might have been a little, uh, <laughs> a little um, categorical in my own way, and I do tend to swear on the internet, which I will try not to do here. <laughs> but, but the essence of my argument is, hell yes, let's have a debate, but quit trying to tell people that dis disagree with you that they're arguing from bad faith or they're, they're bad people, because that is the opposite of having a debate. And 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 I and I think that's a good point to be had, and and, and I and I hear that. However, my, my argument would be that what you just said right now is kind of not what, if you read back about a month's worth of your posts, actually comes across. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, and I think making that point is actually a good point to be made, and, and and saying, okay, look, this is the type of debate we should be having. But if you look back over, I, I, I mean, most of the posts that you have on this are attacking Greenwald. And, and because, look, yeah, I respect you a ton. You're one of the smartest, funniest writers out there. And, and, and like, I really, really, you know, want to hear, right. to hear your opinion on what actually the NSA and not about how that you don't like Glenn or Greenwald, you know? And, and like, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think that, you know, looking back over your writing, that's what bothers me. It's like, you know, if you want to do a post about how you don't like Glenn Greenwald, fine, that's all good. But I'm saying the majority of the posts have been... Mm that you don't like Glenn Greenwald. Your DOMA post attacked Glenn Greenwald. When DOMA, you know, it's like, DOMA, it's a great day, and you use that to attack Glenn Greenwald. And I just, I don't understand that. You know, it's like, you know, you want to make the point, make the point, that's cool, but then let's get back to the actual, the actual real story, and that is the fact that this massive surveillance. Mm -hmm. uh, am, am I, un, am, do you think I'm, am I being unfair on, on that, you think? Um, I, I went back through my archives for the purpose of the, the, uh, responding to this email because this this guy asked exactly the same sort of question and i found one two three four like eight or nine posts in which i highlight in a paragraph this is a really important consequential story which is precisely why i'm begging glenn i'm pleading with glenn i'm asking his friends please please stop him from beating up on rick perlstein for god's sakes um sure you're not doing your cause any favor you're not if you if your goal is simply to prosecute anyone who disagrees with you, that's fine. If your goal is to win people to your side, please don't beat the hell out of people who might agree with you 80% for not going that last 20%. And the response to that, you know, I'm a contrarian jerk sometimes. And the response to that was, oh my God, Drift Glass is sold out. Oh my God. Are you being paid off by the White House for, for, for <laughs> not being a loyalist to the cause? I'm like, you know, you want to know how to get me to keep writing about this? Keep calling me a jerk. Keep, keep it. And so I, I, I must admit I kept it up uh, a little longer than I should. But you mentioned the Doma post. I reread that and I got a, a lot of really nice emails over that because it was, it was heartfelt. I, I was not attempting to, really was not attempting to attack Glenn at all. I was trying to point out to him that when it's personal for him, he is willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to accept an imperfect ruling because maybe if you were me, maybe if you had your rights taken away from you, maybe if you were in my shoes, you would understand that however imperfect this ruling is, it's better than what it was. And I think it's a very human moment. I absolutely, and I absolutely agree with him. And my, my point in that post was, can you possibly find it in your heart to extend that empathy to people who are not Glenn Greenwald? Can you possibly find it in your heart to, to find the same empathy for people who are willing to accept an imperfect solution or willing to say, you know what, I think Obama sucks on these 10 issues and Democrats are terrible, but I also think that the Republicans are coming after, after my abortion rights. And they're coming after my voting rights. And I don't think sinking the two-party system is in my short-term best interest. You might disagree with that, but can't you accept the fact that someone might believe that and not be a monster?
I mean, so, I, 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 I think, and I want to, I want to get Blue Gal in on this because it's you haven't actually had a chance to speak yet. So I want to get you okay. a chance. Right. So just give me one second, and, and then we'll, we'll get we'll get you into this. I, I think that that might be a somewhat unfair characteristic. And, and, and look, you know, uh, I, I'll say that I, I like Glenn Greenwald. I think his writing is great. You know, he's he's been, I'm not like close friends with him, but he's been on my show. My yeah. interactions with him, he's been nothing but kind to me. And I, and that, you know, and he's been nothing but really nice to me. Yeah. Um, and But I know he does get into a lot of, you know, Twitter battles with people and, and online battles with people. But I I, I would say, I, 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 I know with a simple Google search, I could find you post of Greenwald saying that there are some things that, that Democrats are better than Republicans are. Yeah. I, I know you could do that. You know, you know Noam Chomsky, the far left, you huh. know, d- d- man says that he would, if he lived in a swing state, he would have voted for Obama yeah. because of the lesser of two evils. So I think that that's actually not, I, I think that, 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 you're pro- maybe prescribing something onto him that actually may not actually be the actual well, way he thinks. 